All right, uh, continuing to learn more about Roll20. We have covered Character Mancer, making a linked character sheet, making a linked character token, uh, making spell tokens, the basics of how dynamic lighting works on a token, and so on and so forth. Uh, now we're going to start digging into building an actual adventure. So for this adventure, I have selected the uh, Delian Tomb, uh, original creation of uh, Matt Coville. He's a guy that knows a lot about D&D. Um, and it's a great introductory adventure. It's very simple. So it would make a great example for one that we could uh, turn into a Roll20 adventure. It's also free on uh, DMs Guild and various other places on the internet. So um, you can kind of pick up your own copy and follow along if you would like. Um, that uh, link will be in the description. So we have our landing page. And landing page is cool. Um, the adventure begins with some bad weather setting in and the party uh, traveling to a very large city. Um, because they've been hired as mercenaries to protect a merchant uh, as he makes his way to this city. Um, the storm is looking uh, a little shady, and the hour is drawing late, so the decision is made to stop at a local farmhouse, uh, which you can see on this adorable little map I made in Incarnate. Uh, they want to stop right here and see if, hey, can we stop for the night? It's just too far to the city. I don't know. I'm not very good at making maps to scale. For whatever reason, um, that's what happens. So it's a one-shot adventure. Hopefully the players are just going to go with it. So you uh, you need a map of a farm? Question mark. Do you? Uh, there's two ways to approach this. Uh, if you think they're going to be going... Well, there's a lot of ways to approach this. Uh, but if you think the players uh, would be more engaged by an actual map that they can move their miniatures around on, uh, you would probably want to go with that. Um, if your group is a bunch of murder hobos and they're probably going to kill the entire family at the farm, you definitely want to have a battle map ready uh, for a farm. Um, if your group is a bunch of role players and they are totally cool with Theater of the Mind, you don't need to have anything. Just uh, describe going to the farm and all of that. Um, another thing that you could do is you can bring assets in to your GM's lair and you can flash them at the players while uh, you are describing the scene. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to in roll 20. I'm going to go to my tools. I'm going to go to the little cube, the second one down. I'm going to switch to my GM's lair. And now I have collected from Pixel Bay, which is a free um, to use image site. I'm going to start uh, dragging over some of the assets I found. So they're going to be stopping at a farm. So I'm going to drop this picture of a farm over here. All right, there we go. And let's see. I'm going to bring over this picture of some wheat. Sure. Yeah. And we need some, maybe a picture of the farmer might be cool. I mean, again, theater of the mind, you're just describing the guy, but it wouldn't hurt. So what I could do is I could go over to my library and I could search to see if there is art of a farmer that I could use. Or if I found art online I could use. Or in this case, I have some farmer tokens I made. Uh, these are all things that you could do. Um, yeah. So, for example, I could bring over this farmer and his wife. And I think the daughter plays a role in the adventure as well. Um, here we go. Cool. So these are all living on the DM's layer, so the players can't see them. And I'm going to shrink them all down so that they are not crowding up my view. There we go. They're all squished and squashed, and that's not going to be a problem. Cool. And I'm going to hide them up at the top of the screen. 
So now when we start playing, I say, hey, so uh, you ride up on this farmhouse, and then I will describe the farmhouse. And then, as a little bit extra, I'm going to, on my GM's layer, select the farmhouse, and then hold down Shift and hit Z, and that will flash this lovely picture while I am describing the farmhouse, which is pretty cool. Uh, the players can click anywhere on their screen and have that picture go away. Um, and if they say, hey, could you show me that again? I can just do Shift Z and show it to them again. Uh, and then I say, um, you know, looking off uh, into the fields, you see that this prosperous farm grows, you know, beautiful fields of grain, right? So you're just kind of like immersing them. You're taking advantage of the tools that you have to make it kind of cool. Uh, a man, hard at work, turns to greet your party. Uh, he looks over at you and begins to speak. And then you could kind of throw up his character art with that Shift Z again. And then they have this conversation. Um, shortly, he is joined by his wife, right? And then you throw up that. Um, so Shift Z with assets is a great way to sort of flash those assets up on the screen and um, get people's attention, right? Because they're going to see motion on the screen. They're like, hey, what's going on over there? Um, it's also very useful if you are not good at character voices. Um, you can, you know, say so and so says, and then throw, you know, so and so's character art up on the screen so that the people uh, playing can associate. Oh yeah, that's that guy that is talking. Um, and if you don't have a very good lady voice, you could just, you know, or a very good guy voice, or you don't have any voices, you just sound the same all the time. Um, this can help a lot to sort of show, hey, this is what's going on here, this is what's going on there. Um, and honestly, for the first encounter of this adventure, where they're at the farm and an adorable little boy goes missing, um, and they have to go save the little boy, this might be all you need. And it will just sort of keep their focus and keep them interested. And then you say, uh, you know, oh, tracks lead off to the uh, into the forest. And you could have a picture of a forest and flash that up there. So you could sort of use this to your advantage of just sort of stashing uh, interesting um, photos and assets for the adventure. Um, and use them to sort of set the, the pace, not the pace, the mood, there we go, of the adventure. You could say, oh, well... Um, you enjoyed dinner with them, blah, blah, blah. Um, the little girl, you know, flies into the house, uh, tears streaming from her face, uh, cuts and bruises. She explains that she and her younger brother were playing by the woods uh, near the edge of the field, and tiny green men came and grabbed the little boy, and they ran away. Um, and so when the party is ready to uh, start investigating, Right, uh, you can kind of flash up like, oh, the woods loom ominously, um, you know, in the distance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, having these visual aids is very, very handy. Uh, another way to handle visual aids is you could make a bunch of handouts uh, by going to the journal tab and going to handout. And you could say um, the forest, or um, I think in the adventure, it's like, the boar's forest or something. Um, and then you could drag the art uh, that you had selected over there. And then save it. And when you're ready to show it to your players, if you don't have to store it in the GM layer, you could just go here and choose show to players, uh, show to everyone. And now they can see it, and if they click on it, it will go full screen, and they can click off of it. The benefit here is that they can reference it over and over again, because it shows up in their um, journal. You could even make a folder and call the folder Handouts, right, and then store it in there. And so there's two different ways to sort of present that material to your players. Um, I have started really relying heavily on Shift Z uh, because with all the templates and all the character sheets and all the important handouts that will show up in the game, like maps and uh, clues and ominous letters and magical item stats, uh, their journal starts to get really cluttered with stuff. So having a handout to show them what a forest looks like 
or what a field of grain looks like, uh, it's just eventually going to clutter up their, um, their handouts and their journal. So I have started moving, uh, when possible, over to the hiding stuff on the GM's layer and just sort of flashing it up there at the players as needed. So, um, you know, two different approaches to um, prepping and using handouts to handle um, non-combat scenes that might not require a map. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you a more advanced alternative to this, which is to use Roll20 to build a page specifically to set a scene. Uh, so that'll be the next video, is setting a scene using a Roll20 page.